Hey, I have a good video for you today. I'm going to be painting a bird. It's one of my favorite things I like to do as a demo for my students up at the university. Birds are nice and easy and interpretive and fun. You don't necessarily have to be spot on accurate when painting a bird for them to still look like a bird. So they're, they're very beginner friendly. I'm going to be using a student grade paper and a cheap pan set of colors. If you're just getting started, don't worry about the expensive stuff until you start getting a good handle on your technique and your stages and states of watercolor. You're going to be doing a lot of practice and you don't need to burn through good paper while you're learning to do this. Here is the little photograph of the coal tit that I have found out on Pinterest. Nice little neutral greenish grays, blue grays down through the, uh, the uh, soft focus, out of focus background. So it's just a nice soft wet on wet color transition that we'll be working with. And then all of the main subject matter, the, the branch with all the lichen and the, and the little growths on it with the bird. So I've already gone through and sketched up. There we go. A little version of it and I just did it uh, just sketched it out get the shapes right you know if you can get the right shapes and get it birdish it will read just fine once we get started with the watercolor so all right so let's get started and we're going to mix up that background and that's normally where I'll start with a uh, watercolor like this I'll I'll deal with the background first so and that's going to be oh I'm going to start with some of this green, this viridian green, and this pan is pretty stiff. I've watered it down, but I do want a fairly thick mixture, so I'm going to try to get it really saturated and make it look good. Alrighty, get that base green. I'm going to throw a little burnt umber into that and we're going to get that nice intense brownish green greenish gray color right there and let's see yeah that's a i think that's a burnt umber there we go so it's really this is looking pretty good and you want a good puddle get a fairly good uh amount of pigment on there because we're going to be covering a lot of paper with this first pass of color so really just this viridian green and some some burnt sienna in a fairly thick mixture probably a coffee to milk consistency and i'm splattering my paper that's all right all right so that's a good starting point but before i get started i'm going to just quickly mix up just a smidge of a bluish version of it Okay, maybe a little thinner, about like that. Throw a little ultramarine in it. There we go. And maybe just a smidge of the burnt sienna. Oh, I'm sorry, that's yellow ochre. All right, so I have that ready and ready to rock and roll. A little more. So I got a good puddle. It's pretty heavy. And I'm going to do a live edge. I'm not worried about taping it down, taping off the edges or anything. The paper will roll a little bit, but I do have a trick for how to kind of flatten out your paper once you're done with watercolor. I, for me, it doesn't have to be perfectly flat once it's done. Normally when you uh, frame it and mat it, I'll, I'll do some of my, my uh, tricks I learned as a graphic designer to flatten out a, a, an illustration. And it normally works pretty well. And besides, you, you put it under glass anyway. So, all right. Deep breath. Here we go. All right. So, now again, this is that student grade paper that I'm working with. And I'm just going to work around that bird as quickly as I can with the color. And I got a good bead right there. So, I'm just going to come in and just paint in and catch some of those shapes edges right there all right cool look at that i am slathering lots of it on there all right and when i when i do this i like to mix up my marks so that you know i might leave some peekaboos here i'll leave a little peekaboo right there there we go and i'm just going to work my way down the shape 
I'm going to throw a little of that blue in now. All right, and as we come progressing down, I'm going to clean out my brush, unload it a little bit, throw a little bit of water in it, and now I'm just going to start pulling it out and letting the color get a little lighter and thinner as we work our way down. All right, and there we go. Getting down here to where all the fun action is happening. Okay. And you can kind of see where it this paper dries really fast. So you do have to be pretty pretty Johnny on the spot to get it to work quickly. It's, it dries a lot faster than a, an Arches or a Weatherford. That they they seem to retain their their uh, moisture a lot longer than this this paper does, but that's okay. We're just going to kind of work with that. There we go. I'm going to get some more of that blue, a little more of a bluish down here. All right, there we go. Just going to pull it in. Let the watercolor do its thing. There we go. Right up under this chin. Throw that green back in. There we go. So this is the fun part, letting that that uh, wash do its thing and trusting that it's going to do what you want it to do. Now I do have some spots in around in here that I do want to be kind of loose. So I'm going to get, I guess it was this brush. Nope, that's the wrong one. I'm going to get this one. I'm going to use my mop. We'll see if that works. All right, I want to soften some of this right up over here. So I'm just going to come in and just dab around, get it wet, just so it has a nice soft edge over here. Yep, there we go. Something we can mess with later on in the painting. And while it's still damp, you can still do this. Actually, I'm going to get a flat. I'm going to get a smaller flat. So I'm going to use this little flat right here. And there's some edges over here. I want to try to soften up. There we go. All right. So I got a nice bead. I got a bloom happening right there, right there. That's all right. They don't look too bad. This is drying nicely up here. The biggest thing is you got to lay it down and just let it dry. And don't go in and dab a damn and try to, try to fix it. Just kind of mentally prepare where you're going to be placing this stuff and then just allowing it to do its thing if you have to you can come in and soften push it around a little bit and then we can just trust that it'll it'll look good when it's dry and then up here right up there where that there's a bunch of nice little feathers kind of a soft edge back in here i'm just going to soften up this edge with a damp brush. So this is my dry into wet. Just softening it up so it's not a real sharp edge right there. And it's going to be a highlight right there. So I'm coming back in right up to the edge of where I softened it and removing some of that pigment. And again, you can, you can always come back in and fix, adjust, there we go. All right, anything happening back here? I might try. Look how wet that is. Isn't that great? All right, cool. All right, I'm just going to come right up on this edge. I'm going to soften it up a little bit. All right. So Mr. Bird is outlined pretty well. All right, so as this is right now, i got to be careful so I don't stick my, my, uh, my finger in that. I don't know what that was doing there. All right. Let's see here. Now if you, you know, I could also come in and just kind of sop that up a little bit. But I'm, you know, I am affecting it a little bit. So I'm just going to sop up Mr. Bead. And he'll dry a little faster now. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so I need to get kind of a little more of a yellowish green. So I'm going to use that same color right in here. 
and right on the back of that bird is a nice greenish color right up here I'm just gonna drop in some of that color right in here coming around the back okay comes around comes around there we go I'm just gonna soften that up bring it around all right and then I'm just knocking down color I'm just color blocking at this point so this is going to dry very light but it's going to have that nice color tinge to it that I was, I'm wanting so I can just pop that in here and I can intensify that later I'm just going to try to keep a few of the highlights okay and then I need some blue so I'm going to grab some of that blue he's got a nice little spot on the top of his head of some blue again I just need some color of that color right in that spot so we'll just pop that in there okay I'm just going to remove it this remember it dries lighter I might even lift a little more of that out all right so now I need a little smidge of probably I'd say some that's a burnt sienna I've been calling it burn number good grief all right that's the burn number this is sepia so I want but I want a smidge of orange in that there we go it's a kind of a dirty rusty orange all right and it's very thin very thin indeed so I think that's oh like a cadmium orange right there so and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add that orange right in here all right bring it down it comes clear down to the belly of the beast right there all right there we go a little smoother I want to get a little more of that yellow ochre throw that in there there we go all right so look at that we already have the bird ready to rock and roll I'm going to use why well, I have the mixtures I'm going to go ahead and just drop in some of that onto the onto the uh, twig that it's sitting on is that a twig looks more like a damn post there we go all right I'm going to soften those edges up a little bit there we go we're just working in generalities and just trying to bring down the uh, we'll knock down that white we don't want all that white right Got a little dibby dabby right there all right and now let's get a little of that intense yellow green mix it in with some of that brown and we'll do some of the lichens and uh, the little growths that are on the branch working in just irregular shapes organic shapes so throw that over here let that color kind of bounce around interact got some up here and again as with my other demos the photograph is really for me just a jumping off point I don't care necessarily how accurate my interpretation of like all of this foliage and, and lichens and all of that is to the photograph as long as it reads properly and it does its job I'll be happy so I'm just going to drop color in and we'll be ready to go all right so we're just about there I'm going to go back over to my flat brush, unload it, wet it down, unload it. I'm just going to kind of come in and let it softly do some things right there. Soften up some of these edges right there. Pull them out. Spread them out. All right, so right now it's pretty well blocked. These are. This is like our first 
base color for the bird, the underpainting that we'll be taking advantage of in our next stage, which is coming up pretty darn quick. So I just need to let this dry and not mess with it or fuss with it anymore. And we'll get started on stage two as soon as this dries. So hang on and, and keep tuned in. Stage two is coming. All right, so the piece is now dry, so we're ready for stage two in this uh, process. And the surface is, I can still feel a little moisture in the paper, but it's ready to go. We can go ahead and move on to the next state. And right now I'm gonna come in and try to get a little more of the contrast on the body of the bird and start developing those uh, more saturated colors where I need them. So I'm gonna be working with a medium round in this in this regard right here. So I need, I'm gonna be working with that greenish blue, but I need to get a little more of that darker, darker color happening here. So I'm putting a little of that, uh, it's either a Van Dyke brown or a sepia. And a little more, and this is a classic mixture, the ultramarine with the, uh, with the umbers or the sepia to get a dark, rich color. So it's still very greenish brown in regards to the uh, color profile. And we have a lot of striations on the uh, wings of the bird right back in here. And I'm, I'm sitting here looking at this. It looks like more of a profile of a nuthatch. I don't quite have enough of an arc on the back side of the, of the bird. So, I mean, I could either live with it, which would be fine. Nobody would ever know. But I might just simply try to rescue and, and come back in and, and save that, that edge on this back side. So I just need to get more of an arc right in this area. So I'm just going to come in. I'm going to, with a damp brush, I'm just going to come in and kind of loosen that up and pull it off and see if that will give me a better shape a little fatter bird okay so i think that's working come right down here on his head i'm going to go back keep pulling it out a little further so there you go he's looking a little fatter he's not quite as much of a nut hatch is he Students are always asking me, Rusty, why are you always painting birds? It's, they're easy, right? If you don't screw them up. All right, so don't screw it up. All right, that's good enough. So that'll dry, and this paper dries really quick. And if you look, you can kind of see over here on the paper. Now this is indicative of what happens with a cheaper paper and cheaper paints is that when you get a fairly thin mixture of them, it kind of separates, it gets a little grainy, all right? So definitely you can see some of that graininess, but you can also, you know, just live with it. It's all right. You'll get used to it. <laughs> but once you get into better pigments and paints and stuff, it, it won't be quite as, uh, as noticeable, if, if, if ever noticeable. So, all right, so that's drying, and this paper dries so quick. What I just have done would have taken an hour to dry completely. So, all right, let's come back, get my palette back over here. All right, so I'm going to come in. I have that nice dark color, brownish green, pretty thick consistency. And I'm just going to essentially come in and get some structure and some contrast and some saturation in here. All right, so with that said, I just need to kind of think about I'm looking at my drawing underneath. I do have some some of the uh, feathers kind of painted in over here, so we'll just kind of I want to get them in here and bring it over and get that that shape defined. Okay, so it's got a really nice shape right in here, and then it's really dark right over here. So I'm just gonna pop that in. All right. There we go. Pull that on up in here. Okay. All right. We'll get some. 
All right, cool. And I'm looking here. I'm going to get a little more. I'm going to water it down just a little bit. Throw a little more of a... Again, I can either rescue those highlights or I can come in with a a white at the very back end and rescue those highlights if I need to. So right now I'm just going to keep blocking in some structure, softening it up. There we go. There we go. I like that nice little soft edge right here. Okay. One nice thing about this paper, it it releases the pigment too nicely. So that's one of the advantages of it. Although the dryness, it drying so quick is kind of a a thing you have to get used to. Get a little more phthalo here. All right. Okay. Let's get a little more of this. I'm going to get that. There we go. He's got that little white spot on the back of his head. Comes down. All right, right across. There's his eye. Okay. And it definitely is a big old wet mess right now. Pull that up. And I'm going to drop in some of the work around on his eyeball. And I'm going to throw a little bit of this orange right here on his beak, right back here. And that color spreads a little bit. That's kind of fun. Get this bluish color again. Work a little bit of that on the beak. All right, and then I'm also going to come over here, get a nice rich brown, and I'll come back here on the back side, and we'll just kind of paint some of that crunchy underneath side of this twig. Again, I'm just popping a little more of the contrast in. You got to think when you're painting an object, a shape, a form, think of its actual form. So I'm going to try to make some marks in kind of a, a cylindrical manner so it indicates a little bit more of the uh, form of the twig itself. So that's looking pretty good get a little bit of it up here under there's a lot of contrast right up under here so i'm going to drop that right in right underneath right against this foot comes clear down right up against this foot and a claw and that back side throw a little blue into it as well a little more contrast here we go and that's still wet enough, I could just drop a little of that blue in here and it's going to spread all over. That'll look good. Alright, so just bouncing around. <clears throat> there we go. This is a ultramarine and there's that uh, 
that's the Van Dyke, I think. This is sepia. So look how dark that is. And it's not black. It still has a color hue to it. So it's a very cool, dark mixture. I just was wanting that for right back here. Okay. Here's that little edge I picked off right there. All right. So I'm just going to pull that on down. All right, starting to get some of that structure. All right, anything else at this point? I want to just kind of let it dry. This is all kind of wet right here. This is dried nice. See, it's already nice and dry. So that should be nice here in a second. Okay. Get that nice thick mixture. Burnt, umber, sepia, or ultramarine. Creates a nice contrasting color. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on really kind of jumping into stage three at this point. Although at this point, with this piece, with the birds, you're kind of jumping from stage two to stage three. So you're working your, your shapes, your colors, your contrasts of stage two. And now I'm, uh, with the bird, I'm needing to develop some of the structure within the wings and the dark darks, the drawing essentially for structure. So I, I do have to come in and really start finding that structure in the overall qualities of that back and the feathers and all of that so that is where i'm going to go right now and try to try to rescue all the chaos and get some of this to start conforming and bending to my will hopefully it won't totally spiral out of control So yeah, I'm just I'm just drawing in details and finding the shapes, the feathers, and doing everything that's necessary, looking for wet spots. I don't want to set my hand in anything. So we have some really elegant little lines we gotta kinda indicate in here. And again, I'm not terribly concerned if it's a hundred percent accurate, it just has to look accurate. I think it's the ultimate expression of fake it till you make it, right? So, all right, so we have this whole little set of highlights right over in this area that we'll be picking out. So, but what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna kinda get some of those striations leading right down to it established first. Okay, and they all kinda bend as they come around and then it's really dark right up here let's drop those shapes in right there i'll be i'll be softening those here in a second we got a big shape right here so a big swash of that color coming right up to that little cheek area and then we'll come in and get some more of those stripes and striations okay okay all right so we have a nice little white highlight right in here somewhere I'm gonna at least put it there that's where I want it all right and we do have the other feathers are starting to come into play right in through here we'll find shapes yeah they come around come around it's really dark right back up in here throw some more striations this way there we go so we're getting there 
really dark right on the back side here where all those feathers come together all right and I'm just gonna intensify right down there where that little fuzziness happens all right there we go come right up underneath that bottom part of his beak cool his eyes finally dried that's kind of the fun part too is when you can come after the eyes and and uh once you get that eye looking right, everything starts to sing at that point. All right, let's come in. We'll... All right, right in through here. It's very dark, so I'm going to... Now I am marking in a way that indicates kind of a feather, right? So I'm, I'm leaving a ragged edge. I'm going to come right over that. The top of his eye is fairly flat. And we'll come around, leave a little gap. We're going to come right down on top of that beak. It's really dark right in through here. Okay. And the underneath side of his beak, we'll pull that out. There we go, right there. Okay, so all the structure's starting to function. We'll be able to, to uh, pull a lot more suggested detail out here in a few minutes. I'm gonna darken some of this up. All right. A little bigger brush there we go still very dark it's it's a kind of a blue bluish black and I need more blue now so I'm gonna really influence that it's really a very cool black now and we're just going to intensify top part of his head more saturation all right and right underneath down under here as well all right and actually that color is perfect a little more ultramarine that color is just perfect for his foot his leg so I'm gonna go ahead and drop in the shape of his leg and that foot and that knuckle and the claw we'll just drop that in and then we have the back part of his foot and the claw reaching around the back behind all right and i want to really thin this blue down it's kind of a steel blue but it's really a new nice thin mixture now i'm going to drop some of that color right up underneath there and i'll feather it out all right now back here it needs to be more of the burnt sienna same drill i'm going to i'm going to thin out the color considerably and i'm just going to drop that in there and thin it out and loosen it up there we go so it's, it's going to be white i'll be setting some darker colors up against it so i'm going to soften this edge up right here all right let me grab my flat again this is my half inch flat and I'm just going to come in here and just soften this edge all right so it's not a sharp edge I just want it to be a little softer under there all right so it's very wet that dried nice right there all right so I think what I'll do while it's while this is drying I'm going to work a little bit down here I'm going to get some more of this green. I'm going to make it a little greener green, a little lighter green. Drop a little of that orange in it. There we go. So, whoops. 
All right, so I'm just going to come in and just drop a little more irregular shapes right in here, right over here. Just some irregular marks. A little more saturation there. All right. All right. Now, okay. So I have some colors. I'm just going to start pulling this down a little more. A little darker color, bluish green now. I want to throw some of that right in through here, soften those things up. Get a little more color on the back side of these. Alright, a little more color back here, back here, right up in through here. Okay. All right, so I need a little bit of this color, fairly thin. I want it right in this spot, right about right in here. And I'm gonna thin it out. Just need the, the suggestion of that tone. Again, I'm developing form. Here's a little darker. Again, there's kind of a shape right in through here. I'm just going to kind of do a cross contour mark right there. Okay. Bird is coming along. I need some really dark contrast right under here. When you're painting uh, trees and foliage, try to keep it angular. It'll read more natural. Uh, if you if you make your branches and and things with depending on the tree, but typically if you make them too uh, curvy, they look like noodles. So you want to keep them angular and plane changes quickly. All right, so. Come over here and just soften some of this up a little bit. All right. All right, so that's pretty much, you know, stage two and Maybe touches of three already moved in here. So it's pretty wet. I bounced around and I'm really needing to add some structure and get some of the, uh, the detail to start popping. And let me look here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get a nice, again, nice thick mixture of the ultramarine and that sepia color. And I want to come after this eye right here. Okay, so try to protect a highlight. <clears throat> and 
pull that lower lid down. There's a nice little ridge right below it. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, that it really starts to come to life when you get your your eyes looking just right. Well, now I'm going to grab a little Payne's gray right there. I got that brown going there. A little more ultramarine, thicker. This is quite considerably thicker, so I am really coming in to intensify that eye, those edges, the shapes, right in there. And you can start getting, with the fine brush, you can start getting some of those fine little details, little feathery wisps right there. I'm going to get that top part of the nose right here. And it's a very fine line. I'm breaking the line too. I'm not doing a continuous outline. And then I want to come in. I got that nice little highlight right there. Come right along that. Bring it right down. And try to protect that other highlight on the underneath side. Alright. Pull it back. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of come up here and just try to feather out that spot right there. Cool. That's starting to work. I'm going to get the underneath side. Get a little more of the wisps. And it's going to transition to the just the underneath side of it. So I'm just going to try to make some irregular marks. There we go. So you really see with this stage, stage three, that detail and contrast and structure is really starting to pull the bird out from the background. I'm working with a number what? Number one round. This is, here I'll show it to you, Da Vinci Cosmo Top. I'll put a link in the uh, description if you want to get some of these. These are really nice brushes. I've always liked them. But everybody finds their own things they like. So we'll just throw that detail there. All right. Okay, now going to feather this out. Now what I'm doing here, this is actually kind of a, a pen and ink drawing technique. I'm just using like uh, line as value. So I'm, I'm painting consecutive lines right next to each other and making them lighter, thinner, smaller, and it starts to read as a different value. And if I've not done it to my satisfaction, I'll just come in and lighten it up. All right, so the front part of the bird's looking pretty good. I got a big drop on his forehead, and that's going to be a problem if I don't fix it. So let me drop a little more pigment on there because it's going to be a problem child right there. There we go. We'll see how that goes. All right, now I really want to work. I'm going to throw a little more of that yellow ochre and orange on the underneath side of his belly. That's the nice, that's that nice color, I think, that's going to make everything pop. So if I can do that without sticking my hand in 
anything. Actually, there's that nice hot brown right there. Throw that out. There we go. And actually, I can see just a smidge of that color here as well. So I'm going to just throw a bit of it up here. So just a little quick glaze. The thin brush and loosening it up, just throwing it down there, just for the hint of color. All right, now let's throw some of this underneath. It comes clear over here. And it's really intense right up towards this area. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to loosen it up, feather it out. That orange is the, or, it's orangest right by the wing. And then it gets a little more of a yellow ochre color. So I'm going to come out here and just throw that yellow ochre right on the edge. Try to leave a little bit of that highlight edge right there. So we have the yellow ochre happening. And, up. Oh, I got another drop. How did I do that? Let's lift that up there. We'll just, I'll have to hit that with some black, it's a dark color again. All right, so that's all drying and wet. I'm going to get some more of this thick black. And I'm going to come after the leg right here. So just the underneath portion of his leg. And it comes right down along here. And we'll get the underneath part. There we go. Just suggesting. I'm not trying to draw a lot of the information. Just enough for some contrast and structure on that leg. Soften it up. Create a little form. All right. I need some on the back one. Right back here underneath side okay all right now here's where it gets fun I need to intensify this edge just to make the bird pop a little more and even on the back side so what I need is this darker greenish color again and I think the consistency that it is in the pan should work but it's pretty damn wet. I don't have a good place to set my hand yet. So this has to dry. So while that's drying, I think what I'll do is I'll grab some of that color and we'll just keep working back over here and try to get some of this, this uh, branch to read a little better. A little more irregular. And we'll just do some dry brush, some shapes like that, pull it down around. Again, I don't care that it looks whether or not it looks like that lichen like is in the photograph. I just want it to read as a branch. Okay, so. We'll just keep pushing it. And, and actually, I might even try my... Here, we'll even try my fan brush, see what that does. Get it wet, and I'll get some pigment in it. And we'll just see what that might do. So, that might work. Alright, so. It makes nice irregular marks. It's all wet right there, so it's going to spread out. So. Alright. Get my medium sized brush again. I'm going to glaze a little more brown back in here. While it's all wet and damp, that looks good. All right, we'll get a little more browns back up in here. Yeah. So that's starting to take some form. This is a hot mess right here, but we'll just kind of ignore it for the moment. We'll just keep pushing and pulling. 
trying to rescue it. That's drying nicely. It's getting close. It's still a little damp. So what I might do is I'll come back to my small thin brush. Hang on, is that my thinnest one? Yes, it is. All right, so my little brush. And I'm going to get some of this dark green. And I need to, uh-oh, hang on. I got a, I got a problem. Got another dribble. There we go. All right, here we go. I'm going to try to get some of this structure back here on the left, the growth on the back side of this tree branch there we go all right cool all right that's still pretty wet getting there just trying to get some irregular shapes going all right let's see And I'm just doing this because my bird's so wet. So I'm just kind of killing time, bouncing around, doing some of this stuff until I can get over and work on the birds some more. This is too damp. I really can't do much with that. Everything's just spreading right now, but I am getting a sense of some texture and form to that that branch right there. Crunchiness. This almost gets abstract back in here. So it just has to read right. Throw some more contrast right up under here. All right, so the bird is about time. I think we can come back over to the bird. Start working on it. There's that wet spot. I can fix that. There we go. Cool. Throw a little more. All right, now this is the edge I want to work on. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Sticking my hand in it. All right, so. All righty, now we'll just come down around and kind of reestablish some forms and shapes. I felt something wet. Where did I stick my hand in that? All right. OK. 
broken edges just coming around to define that back side just a little bit I need a little more contrast there and I can even come back over with some of this with a white and get a little even fuzzier feel to it but I just needed that edge right there and I'm going to do about the same thing back here I want to do some suggested edges just some drawn lines kind of creates a sense of rhythm while also providing some structure to it or even right back here on the back side okay there we go sorry keep my hat out of the way all right so I'm gonna throw a little more darkness back here right up under here as well okay Okay, let's see. I'm just going to soften up some of this. It's just a little too bright right around in there. Come back over to the feet. Just throw a little more tonal range in there. Get some ribs on the foot around the toe and the claw there we go that claw is going to be darker right in there throw some more density under there okay softening some of those strokes All right, so I'm going to let that dry for a few minutes and I'm going to come after it with some Pro White, my old antique jar of Pro White that I need to get some water going in it, soften it up, and we'll start coming after some of those other highlights. So, all right, let that dry a little bit. All right, we're getting there. Okay, I want a little more coolness back there. So that is just a quick glaze, just to give me some cool, some of those greens are just a little too bright. I'm gonna fix that in a minute, in theory. Here we go. I'm going to throw a little of that color down in here as well. Soften up, knock that back just a little bit. I want some of that blues right in here. Again, I'm going to, I totally lost any of the highlights that were on the bird. So I'll, I'll have to reintroduce them either by picking them out or I'll uh, add them back in with a, an opaque white, which is why I, uh, created that grabbed my pro white and dampened it down so I'm getting ready to go after that I need some of that blue down in here a little more right in through here 
right there. All right, so this looks like a Wild West mess. Let's look at it. We need a little more contrast. I want to get a little thicker mixture. Some brown, dense, dense, dense. Here we go. This paper doesn't have a lot of tooth to it, so you can't do a lot of uh, your nice tricks that you could with a better paper. But it also forces you to develop a better hand at, you know, that, that irregular hand, you know, that making that unintentional, intentional mark. All right, so I'm still working on that thing. It's just not dense enough, there we go. Oops, missed. All right, let's get a little more of that blue right there. Throw that right up on the top of his head. All right, so we've got a nice color range happening here. We got the light greens, the greens, the browns, the blues all interacting in there. Like this little touch of blue right down there on his body. And you know, just for something unexpected, I might pop a little purple in there. Let's just get a little pool of purple. All right, and where would that good? That would look good maybe right back up here a little bit. Right in this area, just a smidge. There we go. All right, right under his throat, right there. All right, my foliage right in here looks like crap. So let's try to rescue it. Throw it up there against the foot. Get a little greener. Let's get some greener. All right, this is that that uh, yellow green. Is it a grass green? So I'll get a little more intensity going here. We'll just kind of. What the problem is, it's just the the image has so much white lichen on it that I've totally lost that. I might try to come back and rescue it, but I'm just coming in now with some of this green and just knocking back all the highlights, all those pieces of white paper that I don't want. Some dry brush action there. So I'm just gonna keep just fussing around with it until I've either overworked it and screwed it totally up <laughs> or I managed to pull it off. So I need some of this color very thin and I need to knock back that little white spot right there all right so the the irregular marks are starting to work I want to just pull a little more of a tubular shape with that a little more contrast in that right up against the foot that looks good right back here against the foot because I'm, you know, at this point, I'm really not painting detail. I'm just painting patterns and, and and the illusion, trying to create that natural, irregular sense of pattern that goes on in nature. Okay. All right. And I'm going to definitely. Everything's so wet again, so there's wet spots all over. I've got my white paint. My white paint is softening up. <clears throat> so we're coming to, to the end of this. So we're getting close, we're getting close. That's been one of my challenges in doing these videos is learning the steps and processes that I use and be able to explain them to you in a video. But also, I'm trying to film content that will be interesting to watch while trying to paint a decent painting. So 
I'm definitely not very good at walking and, and chewing bubble gum at the same time. All right, let's see here. What am I after? Okay, I know what I'm after. So I'm going to get, this is some Payne's Gray, really thick. I'm mixing it in down here with that green. So I want some really heavy duty, saturated thick. This is definitely a milk to cream consistency because I am definitely going to come in here and paint some detail. I was just checking where all the wet spots are. All right, so on the feathers here, this is where I'm going to start really popping in some of the detail. And I just lost, I just lost a brush. Mm. There it is. All right, so here we go. Now, we are in major detail mode now. So we're gonna just kinda keep bouncing around Trying to create some of those patterns, areas that we can pop some highlights against and make them really pop and stand out. Okay, yeah, now we're talking. Whenever you glaze, you're always going to knock back the uh, the uh, sharpness of anything that you painted and you're putting the glaze on. So this is definitely a reestablishing the, the really heavy duty structure and, and line work. So yeah, I'm in here drawing again and trying to again fake it to a degree that it reads properly. little edge back here. I'm going to get that intensified just a little more. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I've noticed also when I'm doing these that when I am in <laughs> when I am starting to concentrate on the painting I forget to talk okay I'm gonna throw this right in there like that there we go so it's coming together it's all right not looking too bad. All right, let me get my smallest brush. And I'm going to get some white mixed up. Thick white, pro white, thick, thick paint. Had this for <laughs> decades. <laughs> it's good stuff. All right, there we go. So I got a nice little white, thick white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here and I'm going to rescue some of those little wispy edges back here on this back side, this, this rim light right there on the bird. So, come back over here. And that's where these, those darker lines I added a little while ago are going to help make those white wispy edges nice sharp this is wet on dry so that paint is not going anywhere it's thick paint there's no movement it's it's staying right where in the hell I put it so come around all right and I'll just keep mixing in some paint I'm going to rescue this little spot right back here a little bit I'm going to get this beak right there I need a little white spot right there. And I'm going to intensify it right there. 
I'm going to throw a little dab right there, one right on his eye. That's going to make his eye have a glint to it. And right under here. And I'm even going to put just a smidge right on the inside of this black. Okay. That'll make that pop. All right, now there's this underneath, right under his belly. I'm gonna get that edge and try to get a little more of a broken edge right there. Have a little fluffier. All right, cool. Now let's come after those highlights on the wings. Okay, sorry, I'm just mixing up a good, thick consistency. Have a puddle of it there that I can work with. So there we go. Sorry. All right, here we go. We have some little daubs of white on his wings right here. We'll pop those in. And I'm really not using or thinking that the photograph has to be truly... Hey, I'm not a camera. I'm... I'm interpreting this. All right, here we go. Right here. Boom, 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 boom. That looks kind of cool. All right, we got one right here. We got some back here, right there. Got one right on this edge. Cool. And... Okay. One right over here. There we go. Just throw a couple right on that. Why not? That looked pretty good. Okay. All right, here we go. Is that the thinnest one I got? Yes. All right, here we go. It's almost dry brush. I need more pigment. All right, here we go. Now let's try right back here. There's it. All right, and throw a nice thick one here, nice thick one there. There we go. Now it's starting to talk. We got some back here. We transition into the side of the body right there. And there's just a nice little, I'll just throw a smidge right back here. Anyway, we're getting close. That is pretty much, I'm sitting at 58 minutes on this session. And I would say we're just about done. I don't want, yeah, I say I don't want to overwork it, but I think that, that may have, that ship may have sailed. So we'll just throw some interpretive little schmitz of stuff around. There we go. How about one right in here? There, oh, that looks like fun. All right, so there it is. We have a, A nice little Coltit watercolor demo, and I hope you enjoyed it. And here it is. Ta da! Hey, I did promise you a quick little demo on how to flatten out paper. So take a look at this, and I want to thank you again for watching this video. And if you got some value out of it, please give me a like and a subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Everything's going well with this channel so far. I've been very pleased with the uh, reactions and the uh, support that I've been getting. So thank you very much again for watching my tutorials.
So let's get the flattening paper. All right, so you take, there's our bird. It's kind of a little warped. It's got some curl to it. All right, you can, you can kind of do a little rolling like this, a little like this, but the best thing to do is grab a diagonal corner, come over, and just put a little pressure on it, corner to corner, diagonal across this sharp edge. Okay, so we'll do it again. Do it again, and then it, it flattens out pretty nicely. It's flat enough for matting and framing. So that's my, my little tip on if you don't want to stretch, if you don't want to tape your pieces down, you just like working with a, a flat piece of paper, do that and you'll be in good shape. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in our next one. I can edit this. <laughs>